Hello and welcome everyone to game number two of this best of five. It is between an awesome Zerg and an awesome Terran. And in the top left position we have the red Zerg from Team Kontak. It's here. And his opponent down in the bottom right, the blue Terran player, Shuttle. Now... There will be, I'm going to confess this now, there's a video later in this series, I'm not going to give away which one because I don't want any spoilers, which is labelled also, I say that it's game number two. It's not. There was a mislabeling on the replay pack that I got sent over. So, I got to one of the games and I was like, oh, this seems a bit peculiar, and then realised that there was still more games, and so I came back and decided this probably was game number two and therefore recasting it now I'll label it all up on my YouTube that this is game number two and the other game is a future game and therefore it'll be fine but when you get to that future game and you're just like Maddles why are you saying this is game number two like we've had that already it's not my fault the replays were labeled wrong and I had to clarify so apologies nonetheless now we're spawning on Akalon Way so a big macro map theoretically although you can have some very aggressive plays off of this and it's not uncommon to see that for the moment we see him just macroing up getting drones out actually going for a drone scout so clearly being a little bit cautious doesn't want anything too surprising to be occurring there is a refinery there on its way though for shuttle so he's likely going to be going for reaper orientated play early on Hyun getting his macro, uh, macro hatch getting his natural hatch up as a 15 supply We'll either get followed up by a quick gas or a 16 supply spawning ball. It just depends on his personal preference and also what this drone sees most likely. There's no wall off here. That means the drone will be able to come in. We'll see this refinery and therefore should prompt Hyun to go for a 16 pool as opposed to going gas first. Because you want to be able to get those Zerglings out in time in order to deal with the likely Reapers that will be occurring. As opposed to trying to rush out a really quick Zergling speed. And that's why we see the pool coming down and things looking all fairly safe. This is, this is good at the moment. The Reaper is now coming down the drone is just going to keep running about may even go for an extractor on the second gas just to limit options but unlikely um, it is something you can do it just depends on what he's feeling like doing and what sort of commitment he wants to make to it but he's getting his, an extractor back at his main so therefore is going to be going up to one gas we'll start trickling down that Vespian in order to get speed out you see the second refinery is now placed here by shuttle the first reaper should be done no, it's not on yet. Wow, it takes longer than I thought. My head my head timings are completely off because I'm a little bit tired today. But as we can see, the Reaper is just going to come and take out this drone fairly easily. And yeah, now I'm going to just go and get a little scout off, see what Hyun's doing in his base. Both being fairly passive. Two Zerglings on their way out. The Queen, second Queen on their way to for the Zerg player. All pretty fine. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to get too overexcited about. Just standard, normal, pretty, pretty good play is all I was saying. Shuttle now getting down his command center at the natural. So it was a Reaper expand, such a common build. This refinery actually not finished, um, just left half done because why not. Meanwhile, we do have the factory getting started as well, but the Overlord going to come in and get a good little scout out on this. The one thing that Hyun does need to identify is that the natural base has been taken because he doesn't want to overreact to the fact that he sees a factory early, thinking it's a lot of one base aggression. So these Zerglings will force back the Reaper for the moment. But the Reaper can keep doing the lovely little cliff dance as long as it's micro right? And just gets away 10 health. That was very, very close. Not something that you ideally want. Two Zerglings going to come and get a scout up here. And Hyun completely aware of what his opponent's doing as he sees that command center. And therefore, he doesn't need to panic. He needs to drone. Drone, did he drone, did he drone? Maybe start speed up. Oh, he's already done that. Start the Roach Warren up next in order to deal with the Hellions that will inevitably be coming out. These two Zerglings just sitting here just being a bit of a pain to be honest because that's what Zerglings do most of the time. We also have an armory coming down. Oh, that means Hellbats quite early on. Hellbats are always good to see. The Zerglings are allowed to move forward and now block this transition. That's incredibly frustrating. The Reapers are going to have to come back in order to kill those. It's it's just a little bit of a delay that may only be a couple of seconds, but a couple of seconds delay is better than nothing. It's going to throw your opponent's build order off slightly from no matter how refined it is. That Obviously, the armory coming down just means that Hellbats can come out from this. There's no starport starter though, so it's not going to be back drops quite yet. We do have the double gas being taken for shuttle. Meanwhile, Hyun just sitting on one gas for the time being. I mean, he also only had one drone in it for a long period of time, and therefore, that's why his gas is not quite as high as we might be expecting. Two Hellions sitting here. We've got Bunker in a very nice defense position where you can defend the main ramp, but also some of the natural base. So, with the starport on its way, with the reactor there as well. Things aren't looking too crazy. Hyun taking his third Therefore, probably going to get a little bit of a passive bit of play, but with these overlords placed at either exit to the base, 
instantly going to be able to see that actually, yeah, there's probably going to be Hellbats coming out. The only thing he hasn't seen, though, is the, the Starport or Armouries there. So while he should be able to pick up the Medivacs coming for a drop, he may not necessarily identify that it's going to be a Hellbat drop quite yet. There's the Hellbats in production. And while we wait for those to come over... Don't forget, everyone, that I'll actually be doing a lot of casting in the next week and a couple of weeks with the WCS Challenger series from EU. And I'm going to be going through all the groups, I believe, are going to be occurring this week. So make sure you tune in um, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to WCS EU. And I'll be casting there. And it'll be awesome. So come join me in the Twitch chat and be like, Hi, Maddles, I watch your YouTube. Because that would just be cool. It'd be really awesome. And WCS is awesome. I've been watching lots of the Premier Division with Claris and Todd and Apollo. And the social media guy. What are your guys' thoughts on the social media guy? Do you like Do you like the Hubner? Do let me know in the comment section below because, of course, that'd be cool. Or tweet me about the social media guy because that's like social media inception or something. I was going to try and make that into like one word, but it just would have failed really miserably and then I would have embarrassed myself and people probably would have tweeted about the fact that I embarrassed myself. This drop on its way across is about to get spotted by this overlord being like, hey Medivac, what's up? That means that, of course, Zerglings just getting pulled back ready to deal with this. The Zerglings aren't ideally suited to dealing with Hellbat drops though, because obviously Hellbats are fairly, fairly effective against Zerglings, but what isn't effective against, what is effective rather against Hellbats aren't those lovely things called Roaches. A couple of Zerglings are getting fried there. One, two workers have been killed so far. This medevac is going to try and be a bit more of a pain, but Spore Call is coming down at each base, two at each base. Definitely does not want those drops to be doing much more. Meanwhile, we've got two more medevacs coming through, so a big commitment to this drop play out of shuttle. And if it does some good damage, it can be a right pain to come back from that. So we see that the lair is getting sided, the medevac boosting back to, over towards here. There's a spine crawler there, the spore crawler there, and that just means that it's going to help deal with it. There's actually a spore and a spine at each base. I thought. I misclicked and I thought there was two spores. I'm sorry. I'm. I did just embarrass myself. And um, straight off the back of saying I, I didn't embarrass myself. I stopped myself embarrassing myself. I embarrassed myself. That is, that is a rather special talent I've got there. Meanwhile, we've got of course these hellbats doing more damage at the natural base. One of the medevacs was taken out. Meanwhile, we can see that the roaches are going to be able to take out the remaining hellbats. The medevac going to have to do the little dance with death, sitting in this tiny little corner where it's relatively safe for the time being. But one one is coming down. Lair is also coming down. Gases. There's only two being taken for the moment for the zerg. A third on the way. Probably we'll see some more. 1-1 one, one ground weapons armor usually leads into a muta ling bling strategy. But there's no baneling message yet. There are very few other things you can effectively do with it other than going for some mutalisks. Um, unless you just go for a really weird rush up to ultras, which which can work. It's it's possible, but I, I think it's going to be mutalisk most likely. Especially now there's a lot more gas being taken. It's just the right thing to do. Now, here we go. We've got the Hailbats trying to do a little bit more damage. So far, actually managing to kill 16 workers because the main is getting dropped simultaneously. A couple more drones could go down there, but no, managed to get cleaned up. 21 in total were taken out, and that actually means that he had down to just 58 drones to 51 SCBs. With two mules, that's not actually a bad spot for a Terran player to be in, economically speaking. He's ahead in the gas income, and relatively equal on the mineral income, thanks to those mules. So, this is good news for the Terran for the time being. We've got Baining Nest now getting started. The let is finished. The 1-1 one, one upgrades are done. 2-2 two, two melee upgrades. Probably going to get started straight after. There goes down the Spire, so Muters looking ever more increasingly likely. And the reason Muters is actually quite a good decision here is because Akalon Waste has a lot of dead space around the side of the bases and therefore drops are incredibly potent. Getting Mutalisks out really allows you to decrease how effective those drops are and shut them down very easily. And as such, I would like the decision Adakian to do that. The third base has now been taken by Shuttle. He's floated that down there. Upgrade-wise, he's getting a double infantry upgrade, so it is a bio-style build, if you didn't guess that already. This lovely bio-mine style, which makes many a Zerg player cry because bio-mine is good. Really good. And really frustrating to deal with as well. You get so many mines out so quickly. Meanwhile though, these roaches are trying to engage this trying to push everything back. We've got some Zerglings in production. The 2-2 two -two upgrades are on their way through. Burrow also getting research, which I think is really nifty. Um, for the moment, Shadow not committing to this. He's just going to load up. He's going to go for some drop play. He has cleaned out the creature rumors. And the overall placement is good, to be fair for you, and he's going to be able to see this coming, unless it manages to sneak through this tiny little avenue where it cannot be seen. We're probably going to just go straight over this overlord here, but the rest of the unit's getting pulled back in order to defend. The Spire is now finished, and there's no way the Shuttle can know about this Spire unless, I don't think, he scanned the natural, but no, he hasn't scanned the main, so he's unaware that that could be coming down, and therefore, 
has no idea muters are probably going to get made very shortly and therefore these drops will be exceptionally ineffective very very quickly but the pressure is still being applied by the Terran player Shadow doing a really good job in this game at the moment just keeping him pushed back defending 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 as opposed to anything a bit more aggressive we can see that the hatchery is getting taken out here the fourth base will not be occurring that means the shuttle has kept his opponent on an equal basis with him which is always really nice and also is destroyed as opposed to cancelled therefore can lost significantly more resources this push at the natural is being quite potent just wandering its way forward a little more we can see there's a drop simultaneously occurring at the main base the work counts very equal only three more drones to SCV is not a good spot for him to be in but he does have eight mutalists on their way out now that's going to help deal with these drops and really put an end to it because these drops are what are causing Kieran just such difficulty. 27 drones have been killed and for the first time this game Shuttles have taken a supply advantage of those Widow Mines doing a nice amount of fireworks and we can see that the Roaches were not too appreciating of it but with the Overseer there they will now finally get taken out. Having said that though, a counter push is on its way. We've got Drilling Claws getting research from Shuttle just in order to allow those mines to be a bit more effective. Still producing, getting the 2-2 infantry, weapons and armor but the Mutalists are now going to say no no to medevac drop play because Everyone hates medevac drops. Everyone does. Where even if you're a Terran, you hate getting dropped. And therefore, the medevacs will be no more. The other medevac on its way back will get spotted by that watchtower. Will he go and try and react to that? I don't think he can just because of the positioning of these marines. Bailings were morphing there, but a good mass cancel as he sees that these units would have been able to intercept and stop them and kill them before they managed to complete. Drilling Claw is about half done. Bailing speed is also about a quarter done. The plus one air weapons just getting started here for Hyun. This is a really close game, actually. Their supply is incredibly equal, but I'd have to call it at the moment in Shuttle's favor just due to the fact that he's lost slightly less resources and he's also got a better income being on equal bases as that and also on equal workers. So with mules, that's clearly very good for the player and he's also got a supply advantage which is really nice upgrade advantage is equal so there's no advantages on either side but these marines these, uh, these marines and widow mines are doing a nice little bit of damage bailings trying to coax their way forward and get some engagements good detonation goes off there quite a few marines did die and that's of course before even bailing speed has been completed and therefore once bailing speed is done Hyun should be able to engage this quite well all the bailing still edging forward but a big push coming in towards the natural base of shuttle we can see that it's managing to break through this wall here meanwhile the pressure still being applied at Hyun's third these two just really going at each other just tooth and nail all the way bailing finally making some good good connections there and therefore the push at the front of Hyun's base has been stemmed for the moment but follow up is already right on its heels and that just means that Hyun is going to have to keep defending. Needle is doing a good job of keeping the medevac down exceptionally low though um, at least out on the field there are more reinforcing all the time but that just means that with only six out and they're still all back and newly made medevacs they're not going to be healing up too effectively they are going to go for some drop play which is quite ballsy considering the fact that you know there's muters down there's only three muters on the field though at the moment Hyun just kind of touched on those hasn't made any more since the bailings gonna try and get some connections with the widow mines get a great detonation off on so many of those bailings really cost effective there and there's also another widow mine there so another good hit a good nice little pickup as well three mutalists are gonna try and clean up these medevacs as quickly as possible but more widow mines are starting to bow and will Hyun be able to break this here shuttle has got quite a nice supply lead he's just pumping out units constantly he's got his full face secured before that of Hyun, therefore with a one base advantage he is going to be very very happy about that and in terms of the work account he's actually ahead 71 to 69 that's nothing but great this poor widow mine is going to get taken out but he got 23 kills so that widow mine should be rather proud of himself a couple of zones just running around making sure that nothing too crazy is occurring for the time being this fourth being made into a planetary the three three infantry upgrades coming down for shuttle meanwhile compare that to the fact that 2-2 is done but 3-3 not started yet because there was no hive for Hyun so Hyun Hive is now starting to get very late, but with only three bases, he wasn't in an amazing spot to support it. But he does need to start it soon, otherwise, he's going to get himself into a very tricky situation. And these drops are just relentless at the moment. More muters are on the way through. These muters do now have plus one air weapon, so that means that they are quite effective. The medevacs can boost away to preserve their life, but they won't be able to save it because mutalists are faster and boost doesn't last forever. And this just means the shuttle is going to just keep applying the pressure, keep coming through the widow mines. Oh, the widow mines. They died, they got buried under rocks, and this poses a good question. How can Widow Mines, which are burrowed, die to rocks falling on top of them? Explain that to me, Logic. But what I can explain to you is the Changelings are creeping and crawling their way forward, but no, they're not going to be able 
they didn't just see that, okay, there's stuff going on here, but knows the fourth base. The hive is now started. We can see the shuttle is going to take out these rocks. We've got a lot of bailings here, quite a few roaches as well. Shuttle. Hyun, he's not got much here. Hyun's only had just under 140 supply to 180 supply of the Terran player. Look at that. Just 70 army supply for Hyun to 110 of the Terran. Really nice advantage. And of course, more reinforcements constantly streaming across. We've got 3-3 three, three infantry weapons and armor nearly finished for the Terran player. A couple more drops are going off, but getting shut down very easily by the Mutalisks for the time being. And well, here we go. Bailings just creeping forward. But look at these Widow Mines. They're just everywhere. That's always frustrating when you've got quite so many Widow Mines sitting around ready to try and kill you. We can see that the Hive is about two-thirds done. But look at this container at the moment by Shuttle. Hyun's having to try and just pick apart all of these units so delicately because he can't afford to engage cost ineffectively as he's doing at the moment because he's got a lower income than that of his opponent. And therefore, he's got less income and less resources and lots more resources. Generally not in a too much of a nice spot. And especially with an upgrade disadvantage with 3-3 done now before 3-3 even started for Hyun just means that all of these future trades are going to be even nicer for the Terran player. The Greatest Fire though and the Ultralist Cavern getting started straight away as that high finishes in order to get up to tier 3 tech which is going to be required if Hyun wants to break this. And the supply difference actually starting to level out now. But these Widow Mines are going to get a couple of kills on the Banelings. Again, just allowing them to be very cost effective as we can see. And that kind of cost effective nature is so important getting into the later stages. We've got a little bit of a push coming through the side here but Banelings rolling forward gets some nice hits but the Widow Mines managed to save the rest of the infantry. This is a split push now whereby we've got a lot of this energy going in. So many Zergings died there. And that's why Widow Mines are so nice. They knock out such great big groups of units. But for the time being, it would appear that Hyun has managed to break this soft contain. He's able to just start expanding, pushing forward on the map. But is it too little too late? He's down in supply by quite a lot. He's losing quite a few workers here as well. Now lost 28 this game so far. And as the Marines just keep on working at his opponent's base and at his opponent's economy, it's going to get harder and harder for Hyun to start dealing with this. And he does have six more mutilists on the way as well as the Kaidness plating. But Great Aspire, it's done. Hyun... He hasn't got that much in the bank, so I don't know if he's going to be able to support this. Probably not, whereas compared to Shuttle, who's nearly maxed out and has got a huge amount in the bank, getting down two additional star ports ready for the transitions. Things just looking so good for him. A couple of Zergings are on their way trying to knock out these rocks at the back. Hopefully Shuttle will realise in order to come and defend his third base. Meanwhile, his fourth is trying to get taken, but there's an Overlord, a pesky Overlord generating creep everywhere. The Zergings have managed to break through those rocks. And they're going to be met by a lot of marines and quite a few marauders, which is going to be like, no, get out, leave. You are not coming through here. And the Zerglings listen, because Zerglings are simple creatures. They have to follow every instruction they're given, regardless of who gives it. Now, with two ultras on the way, though, they're going to really mix up this battle. But Hyun, he's at 120 supply to 200 of 200 of shuttle. That is a huge advantage. Shuttle just under double the army supply of his opponent. That is such a huge advantage. He's got the upgrade advantage as well. Everything really going in the Terran player's favor. The Bailings get focused down quite quickly there. And we can see that the Queen is starting to die. We've got a handful of units, but with only two ultras there against so much infantry and the Widow Mines as well, I just don't see Hyun holding this. He's He's not got really anything there, and Hyun realizes, and GG's out. So game number two goes to Shuttle. Flick over to game number three. I will see you there any second. Bye for now.